few journalists have achieved the impact and recognition that Steve Croft's work has generated over two decades. For example, the first television interview with Iranian President Rouhani, Cold War Soviet spy Jack Barsky talking about living undetected in the U.S. For, de for a decade, making waves on Wall Street by talking to author Michael Lewis about speed trading, a conversation with then-Governor Bill Clinton and his wife Hillary, watched by 34 million people. First post-election sit-down with Barack and Michelle Obama. Reduce it to one or two words and you still know his stories. Chernobyl, O.J. Simpson, Saddam Hussein, insider trading, bin Laden, Steve Jobs, mental illness, infrastructure hacking, oil prices. There probably isn't an award he hasn't won. RTNDA's Paul White. Peabody, Emmy, DuPont, Fred Friendly First Amendment, and that's just to name a few. Steve Croft represents unbiased, in-depth journalism at its very best, with excellent writing and a tenacious investigative style that leaves no stone unturned. Isaac Newton said, if you have seen further than others, it is by standing upon the shoulders of giants. Steve Croft has offered us such a view. Please congratulate my friend and colleague, Steve Croft. It's great being here. Um, I ran into Gene Jankowski, an old former CBS executive who was inducted a number of years ago and said that he was congratulated me and said, I'm sorry, I can't make this lunch. He says, it's really a great lunch. You're going to have a fantastic time. He says, it's like a fraternity. That's probably like politically incorrect now, but it's definitely a community and it's a wonderful community to be part of. Uh, and quite an honor to be included uh, with the, uh, among the illustrious names uh, of the previous honorees. You know, it's a, it's a big industry, but uh, it's a very small world. And <clears throat> I wouldn't be up here uh, without the help of three giants on that list. Fred Friendly, who was my first real mentor and advisor uh, while I was a student at Columbia and after. Uh, Howard Stringer, another CBS executive before he went off to Sony and got his knighthood. And of course, Don Hewitt. And I have to mention my colleagues also on the list at 60 Minutes, past and present. Mike Wallace, Morley Safer, Andy Rooney, Leslie Stahl. Bill hasn't, is on the road all the time and hasn't been around long enough to really have that big an impact on me, but <laughs> it's great to see him here today. There are two names that are not on that list or yet on that list. That's Bob Simon and Leslie Stahl. As I really share this honor with 60 Minutes, um, which is the best and the most influential news program ever. And it's still growing strong after 49 years under the leadership of Jeff Fager and Bill Owens and the great, uh, some of the great producers who were sitting at table three, and including my wife, my main personal producer. Um, like millions of Americans, my first memories, earliest memories, are in black and white from television. And before that, for a short period, when I was, before I went to school, staying at home with my mother and listening to the soap operas on the radio, um, in radio. But the people that stand out in my mind and the, the thrill it was of getting that first television set and knowing that your next door neighbor had one and someone down the street had one and eventually everybody in town had one it was really a unifying experience. And I remember, you know, people like Arthur Godfrey, Donna, Don McNeil, Diana Shore, Diana Shore and, and Edward R. Murrow. And remember from my grandparents and my parents 
names like H.V. Kaltenborn and Lowell Thomas. For good or bad, it's been the dominant cultural force in America for nearly a century now, if you go back to the beginning of radio. And I want to applaud the foundation and the library for everything they're doing in the way of preserving that record. There is permanence there. The best of it, anyway, has been kept and recorded. And it's going to be a source, an important source for historians, almost a century of material for generations to come. Um, I have no idea what's going to happen in the media world in the next 20 years. I don't even know what's going to happen in the media world in the next week. Um, and I could be wrong about this, but I bet looking ahead, there's not going to be anybody recording, compiling, and curating tweets. Except, of course, for the NSA. Thank you very much.